Iron Shark is the Gerslar Eurofighter at Galveston Island Historic Pleasure Pier. This is a super compact Gerslar Eurofighter packing in the usual Beyond Vertical Drop, plus a few inversions. This layout was so popular that it has been cloned twice. First with Crater at Parque del Cafe in Colombia, and second with Tantrum at Six Flags Darien Lake. This video will serve as a review for the 380 Eurofighter model in general. Galveston Island Historic Pleasure Pier opened in 2012 in eastern Texas. This is a 1200 foot or 370 meter long pier extending over the Gulf of Mexico, but it is extremely narrow. It is just 120 feet or 37 meters wide. The park wanted a midway down the center with rides on both sides. They also want a highly marketable coaster unlike anything else in the region. So they went to Gerslauer for a custom Eurofighter with an extremely narrow footprint. Iron Shark would be just 65 feet or 20 meters wide, allowing it to fit within the park's boundaries. At the time, this was a custom layout, but it understandably has been cloned twice. It is now known as the 380 model, with the 380 representing the ride's length in meters. The ride's small footprint can fit into a lot of parks. Parque del Cafe added Crater in late 2014. This was South America's first and only Eurofighter. Then Darien Lake added Tantrum in 2018. This was notable because it was the park's first coaster in a decade, and was the last edition while owned by Premier Parks. Shortly after the coaster opened, Six Flags acquired the rights to operate the park again, and they renamed the property Six Flags Darien Lake. This ride would not have been added by Six Flags because that manufacturer no longer adds rides from Gerslauer. This goes back to a 2013 accident on New Texas Giant at Six Flags Over Texas. A woman tragically fell to her death. While the coaster was manufactured by Rocky Mountain Construction, the trains were supplied by Gerslauer. Six Flags and Gerslauer filed cross-claims blaming each other for the accident, leading to bad blood between the two. I have ridden two of these 380 models, the original in Iron Shark, and the latest one in Tantrum. While I have not ridden Crater, I imagine the experience will be nearly identical. The two of experience in the US lack any theming, but both look really appealing in their respective park skylines. Iron Shark can be seen from miles away, it has bright blue paint scheme, and the Beyond Vertical Drop really catches your eye as you make your way towards the pier. Then Tantrum has attention-grabbing colors. It has bright green track and orange supports. Not only that, it is located adjacent to the parking lot, so it's one of the first rides you see as you enter Darien Lake. All these coasters have short trains. Each one seats a max of 8 riders and 2 rows of 4. Tantrum is the most efficient coaster at Darien Lake. It is the one coaster at that park that operates with multiple trains. The park owns three, but I've always seen two in use. The crew can check the restraints very quickly, so it's not uncommon from the roll trains. I've never had to wait more than 10 to 15 minutes for this ride, but I also haven't visited the park on a super busy day. I have had to wait longer for Iron Shark though. This is for a few reasons. One, it's the park's lone coaster and most popular ride by far. Two. It has run just one train in all my visits. This even includes a weekend visit during spring break, which is one of the park's busiest times. 3. The operators would only seat a maximum of 6 riders total in my most recent visit. It didn't matter which 6 seats were taken, but it meant the ride's already low throughput was stymied even further. The park said this was a maintenance issue, so hopefully it won't persist. With one train ops, the full queue for Iron Shark could take 1.5 hours, and I know people have had to wait that. The longest I've personally waited for this coaster is roughly a half hour, but keep in mind that was on a day when every other ride at the pier was a walk-on. If you're visiting during a busy time period, I would try to arrive at opening and do Iron Shark right away, especially because the audio spiel for Iron Shark will drive you crazy. Every few minutes, it will repeat itself. Sharks, the greatest predators in our oceans. They are one of the animals that people fear the most. The one saving grace with the queue lines that you get some awesome views of the ride. In terms of seat selection, I don't think it matters much in this ride. The forces feel identical wherever you're sitting. But if you want the unobstructed view, both parks will let you wait an extra cycle for the front if those rows are already taken. Once seated, you are restrained by just lap bars. These are pushed down firmly but they leave your upper body free to experience the ride's forces. This is a major upgrade over the older Eurofighters that had over-the-shoulder harnesses. 
these were less comfortable and could easily cause headbanging on the model's quick transitions. Once dispatched, you roll out of the station and ascend the 100 foot or 30 meter tall lift hill. The view on Tantrum isn't anything to shout about, but the view on Iron Shark is stunning because you're at the edge of the pier. It is one of the best views of any ride. You can appreciate it throughout the layout, but it's at its best when you crest the top and are looking out over the water. But you don't have much time to take in the views before you're yanked down that 95 degree drop. This is a fantastic drop and easily the best part of the ride. Like most Hero Fighters, it delivers strong ejector airtime, and it's augmented by the lap bar restraints. That is contrasted nicely by the crushing paws of G's in the pullout, and those forces are maintained as you rise up into the Immelman. I usually start to gray out here. At the top, the train slows down mightily, and then you get some lateral hang time. This is the one inversion that everyone seems to agree upon. I have seen this model listed with as few as one inversion, and as many as four, no one seems to have a consensus here. One of the controversial elements comes next. RCDB does not classify this as an inversion, but it sure looks and feels like a dive loop. You rotate right and sharply dive back down to the ground. It feels like you twist beyond 135 degrees, so I personally count it as an inversion. The flip itself is pretty mild, but the positive G's return in full force in the pullout. Without any delay, you rocket over this small S hill, and it's the most underrated part of the ride. This gives everyone a good ejector pop. You then have another controversial element. Some call it an overbank, some call it a cutback. I lean towards the latter because it seems to go well beyond 135 degrees. The maneuver is fluid, but sadly sterile. It's probably the weakest element on the ride. Next comes the final instance of is it an inversion? It is either an inclined loop or an inclined helix. It feels more like a helix to me. You get blasts of positive G's entering and exiting the element, but they subside at the apex. Last but not least, you jump into the final breaks. This delivers one last pop of airtime, and a pretty good one too. And if you're on Iron Shark, the track is actually over the pier at this point, and you get some sweet views of the water off to your right. You then return to the station, ending the 1,246 foot or 380 meter long experience. One slight con with Iron Shark is that it does have a shimmy in some of the valleys. It's not enough to spoil the ride, but you'll definitely notice it. Compare that to Tantrum which is extremely smooth. Not sure if it's maintenance related or because that ride's newer, but whatever the reason may be, it is worth pointing out. So what would I rate the Gerstlauer 380 model? I would give this coaster a 7.5 out of 10. I have a slight preference for Iron Shark because of the better location and views, but Tantrum earns the same score because it offers a smoother ride. I really like this layout. It has the usually awesome Beyond Vertical Drop, a few extra airtime pops, and a smattering of positive Gs. So those are my thoughts on the Eurofighter 380 model. This review covers my experiences in both Iron Shark and Tantrum, but I would love to know if the version in Columbia feels and rides similarly. Let me know any of your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.